everybody, Caleb here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today I've got a little bit of a personal project for an after hours job. We've got this nice Breedlove guitar here and it has one major problem and that is, I'll see if you can see it, it's got a nice break. So yeah, it's got a nice headstock break. It's not broken off, but it's nice and broken so we're gonna see what we can do about that uh, maybe do a couple of quick little setup things it's still got strings on it but they're super loose so first thing I gotta do is get the strings off of it so as soon as I took the strings off of it the uh, nut came off so I don't think it was tacked on all that well or it's shifted because of the headstock break but anyway the next step for me is to get these tuners off of here and I checked inside, and this was a uh, made in Korea, which means metric. So I went and got my 10 millimeter wrench. I'll try to keep those in order, although I don't think it matters all too much. All right, I'll we'll flip this over. Uh, take the saddle out of it. I don't know how well you can see the brake, but it's all the way across here. Now, I haven't really got a good look at it, but I'm not sure that it's going to be all that bad. It looks like there's a lot of surface area. We might be able to just glue it back together, keep it clamped up for a while. Uh, these are reverse. The nice thing is this neck is really satin. I mean, especially up towards the headstock. So. You know, we're not trying to blend a gloss finish in, so I really think it's not going to look too bad. If I can get away with just gluing it, I'm not sure how much well you're going to notice. And there's no missing pieces, I don't think. I think it's all there, nothing chipped off or chipped out. You can see I'm putting the uh, ferrule with the washer on the tuner that it goes with. That way they stay together. They're also kind of in the order they go on the guitar over here. They're in reverse from where we're at, but from the front, they're in the order they go on. So hopefully I can put them back on where they were. Not that it should matter all that much, but sometimes it does. Sometimes one or two of them don't quite line up the right way. All right. So we've got the tuners off of here. We can start to take a look at this brake. It's going to be kind of hard for me to show you and me look at it at the same time. I mean, there's a little bit of flex there, but I don't think it's broken all the way through. And I think the biggest thing here is going to be, well, one, clamping it down flat. And actually, see if I, I can do it with my fingers and it closes up pretty good. The biggest thing is that we're going to be getting glue all the way back in as far as it goes. There's a lot of surface area, I think. It's not broken off flat. It's broken off kind of like, well, kind of like this, you know? There's a lot of overlapping grain that I can glue together, and it should be fairly strong where I'm not trying to butt two ends together, and it wouldn't be. I really do hope I can get away with just gluing it up and clamping it up real good. And it does look good. Ah. Regardless of whether I need to reinforce it more, I think that is still the first step, is get glue all the way in there. And I may end up using the, the air spray nozzle for the air compressor to blow it back in there. That's going to be the biggest, probably most important thing I can do here, is get glue all the way to the back of that crack. However far back it goes. And I don't want to open her up too much because I don't want to break it off. I think I can clamp it back and that would make sense. Um, I'm looking here on this side, it kind of follows up to here, but on the other side, here, I think you might be able to see it. it the crack comes up and kind of follows that headstock veneer. There's a little bit of a crack in the headstock veneer. That worries me a tiny amount. I think that's just from the flex of the headstock. 
See, there's a, a crack right here. I think that's just from the headstock flexing, so I'm not sure that that's a big deal. Is there anything structural going on there? Mm, yeah, I think it looks pretty good, actually. It's not too big of a deal. And the other thing is that there's the start of a crack here, or something. It is cracked there, but that's just the veneer. And it doesn't connect with that. So, I think step one is to get glue in this crack as far back as I can get it, and get it clamped up, give it some good time to set clamped up. That closes up pretty good, actually. All right. Just gotta figure out how I'm gonna get some glue in there. All right, so I've got this sitting over on the side of the table. You can see I've got the air nozzle for the air compressor. So if the air compressor kicks on, it's because this is plugged in. What I'm gonna do here, and the reason I'm laying it off the table so much, is I'm gonna try to help, I'm try to let gravity help me here. So I'll get some glue in, use the paintbrush to push it back in, you know, tip it like this, and then if I squeeze it, it should help move that glue towards the back. But I've also got the air compressor here to force some glue in there. So I think I've got a, a good setup here to get this going. My next thought is how am I going to clamp this up? Really, what worked well is if I can put something underneath here and push down here. That uh, pushes it in the right place, and then I can also get some clamping here. Ah, uh, before I get started putting glue anywhere, I think I'm going to think about clamping this. Uh, I do think it would work a lot better if I could hold this part up and pull down here. I think that would give it a nice... I mean, that seals it up pretty well as it is. It just needs a little bit of smoothing. So I think that's the idea. How am I going to execute it? So this isn't glued up yet, but I'm just seeing what this looked like with just this clamp on, and actually, man, it closes it up really good. There's just a little bit of a spot on this side that I think a little bit more even pressure, maybe? Maybe not. Maybe it's not getting any better than that. So, I think we should be good. And I've got leather on both sides of this clamp. So I think we're ready to stick some glue in there, or do the best I can to stick some glue in there. I'm gonna get a little bit of water up here, and the last thing I need is a towel to clean up glue. Here we go. Woo! There's glue in there. I think we're looking really good. I'm gonna try to squeeze it down and get some of the squeeze out out. You see it's squeezing out all the way around. I think there was a little bit of brown in my paintbrush. Uh, the dark brown dye, which ultimately really won't hurt anything. It might help blend everything in. Alright, I think we're good. Let's clamp this thing up. Try to get this centered. Even pressure, that kind of thing. Nice squeeze out. Nice. Alright, I need to go back to the table. You're probably not going to be able to see. Using a little water to clean up the squeeze out. It helps uh, my towel come through and pick it up. Feels good. I think it's going to be okay. I'm going to let this sit overnight. It's clamped up tight. So, by morning, this should be, well, I'm probably not going to get to this until tomorrow afternoon. So, by then it should be very dry. And typically, the longer you let this set clamped up, the stronger it's going to hold to a point. So this should have plenty of time clamped. This should be very strong by the time I take it out. All right, so I'll let this sit and we'll check on it again tomorrow. Well, this sat up all night. I think it's looking pretty good. There's one spot 
well, there's a little bit of a spot where I think the uh, leather kind of got glued in there. And maybe where the leather was, I couldn't clean up the squeeze out quite as well. But, you know, that's on the outside. I'm thinking structurally, I'm thinking it's really good. I do have a little piece of 600 here, and I am going to kind of try to blend it with the 600. If I have to, I'll get the 400. But I'd like to just do it with this. This is where it comes in that it's really nice that this neck is satin because I can just kind of sand it down and you know, I get it smooth and I don't have to match it. I don't have to try to make it match the glossiness because it's already a satin finish. So the only thing I got to do is make sure you can't feel it too much. And also not take all the finish off of that. I think I still have some water left in there. I'm going to try to do this a little wet. It turns out a little bit better. I've got some 1200 here too. And I'll probably finish with that just to help smooth everything out. It's almost there. To the point which you can't feel it. Just a little bit more. You really can't see it anymore, that's for sure. But I'll have to pick it up and hold it like I'm playing it, see if I can feel it. This is feeling really good. There's still kind of a lip on this side. I'll have to pick it up and sand it some more from there. I've sanded it with the 600, I sanded it with the 1200, and then I actually took the semi-chrome and did a light buffing to help kind of blend it. And it feels really good. And the other thing about this break is it's so high up because the fretboard ends, you know, here. So you're really not reaching up in there all too much. But if you do, I mean, I'm not going to tell you that it's totally invisible. You'll never feel it or especially see it. But it doesn't feel bad. Um, there is a couple of little spots you might be able to tell right here. There's some on the other side too where it looks like it's chipped some of the finish out. There's one or two other spots. I'm not going to worry about those yet. I want to see if I can get this set up today. And then I can just do, you know, one or two tiny little drop fills. So I'm not waiting to do the setup while that little drop fill dries. So I think we're ready to put the tuners back on here. But, well, actually, before I put the tuners back on here, I want to look at the fretboard. Make sure it's straight. There are some grooves, some really bad grooves in these first couple of frets. And some flat spots on some of the higher frets. But I mean, there's a, a solid drop off on that first fret. So we're going to file these a little bit. Hopefully get some of those grooves out of there. First thing I need to do is make sure the fretboard is flat. I think it is. It does look really good. Straight edge. Yeah, that looks real good. Okay. I'm going to get my stuff together to do a real quick, and most of the work needs to be done in here, fret leveling job. I guess I can do it here. Um, I need to turn the guitar around so I can run towards the headstock, but that's what we'll do next is a fret level job. Oh, forgive them there, the spirit's sweet to flow. I can sure to feel God's presence in that church of Hickory. So what I'm doing here is I'm focusing on this end, but I'm not letting, you know, just this end get done because it needs to blend well into all the rest of the frets. Which is just see me come back all the way. But I am focusing on the end where all those open chords are played. But I don't want a a drop off. I don't want it where all these frets are lower and then suddenly these frets are much higher because I haven't touched them. It needs to kind of slope even. Even though these frets don't have much wear or any wear, well, not much. They need to be kept relatively similar to these ones that we need to work on some more. There's not any really high frets, and that's good. So all we got is just those grooves. Let me take a look at it. 
It's getting better. We haven't quite got rid of them. They're mostly on the B string. You can see where the, the B string's been played. I kind of doubt that this has ever been done to this guitar. Well, I mean, since it left the factory. Cool. So now we can crown them and polish them up. I'm probably not gonna film anymore. I'll use the biggest crowning file we have because it just works a little bit faster. And then I'll do the regular sand them and then use the semi-chrome to get them all polished up looking brand new. So I'll bring you back when I think I'm done with the frets. Well the frets are all polished and I went ahead and oiled the board. I used the Be Good Wood Oil on it. It looks really good. I did the bridge too but I'm not sure. Yeah it's not in shot right now. That's okay. The next thing we're ready to do is set this thing up. So which means I gotta put the tuners back on and the bridge for the nut and the saddle back on. I've got some strings for this, and these aren't typically the strings we usually use. I know that elixirs were on here, and so I went and got these because according to the music shop I bought these at, these are all the elixirs making right now is the 12s and the 13s because of the pandemic. And they've scaled back who they have coming in. So this is going to be close enough. They're a very similar gauge to what was on here. And it is the 80-20 bronze, it's not the phosphor bronze. I'm not real worried about it. It should be similar enough that it will feel familiar. I'd imagine that. Well, I took those out, but I didn't need to because I need to put the tuners on first. So let's put the tuners on first. Oh, that church, that church, pick me up. Oh, that church. I think it's time to string this. Gotta put the saddle back in it. Bridge is a little different. It doesn't have any bridge pins. They actually load from the back. Uh, this is one of those things where it's a little bit stressful. And you know, I'm fairly confident in the glue up, but it doesn't mean. And I'm not still a little bit worried about that headstock. One nice thing about the rear loading bridge is you don't have to assume the ball ends are going to move like they do when they're underneath the bridge. Although I don't know how much sound transfer it's going to get when those strings aren't you know, in contact with the bridge plate. I don't know, it might still work, but I'll show you kind of what this bridge looks like. The problem here is that the saddle is, you know, higher than where the string comes out. So I have to find a good way to get underneath the string to lift it over the saddle. You can see it's compensated for that B string all the way to the back. So I've got all the strings on it. Uh, I need to tune it up to see where the string height is at, but this is kind of, you know, the big worrisome part. Most of them... <laughs> A little bit of tension, not a whole lot, a little bit. I'm thinking the action looks a little high. <laughs> what I'm also thinking is one downside to not having bridge pins and having the strings go through the bridge this way is that if I want to take the saddle out, I have to get these strings really, really loose if I'm gonna fight that saddle out from underneath these strings. The bridge pins, you can pull the bridge pins, pull the string out, the saddle comes right out. This way to get it off of here, I have to actually unattach it on the other end, which I really don't want to do. So I'm hoping that if I have to take that out, I can just loosen these up and get it out. I hope. All right, let's tune this thing up and be very, very careful. Very, very much don't want the headstock to break. Again, I don't think it's going to. I really do have faith in the glue job. 
there's always that. That feeling of not being sure. And I also, I wanted to point out this out. Um, <laughs> it's gonna sound like a weird thing to say, but these tuners work. Which doesn't sound like it's noteworthy until you remember the amount of, you know, 60, 70, 80 year old instruments we have in here with tuners that just don't work. Sounds like it's pulling it than that. Quite a bit of tension on it. Whoa. Did it just slip? I think it just slipped. I'm gonna make sure we're good and tight up on the headstock end on that E string so we're not gonna slip again. I'll bring you back once I have them all up to A tension. Well, I've got it up to half a step down. So. Noticing is this end feels really stiff, so I think the action's a little high at the nut. The action's looking about right down here. I haven't checked it exactly yet, and you know it's gonna change as it changes pitch still, because tension changes and the shape of the body changes a little bit. Pulls the bridge up. That's that sort of thing. But let's check it where it's at. It might be a touch high. Yeah, it's high. Not crazy high. Uh, about 120 thousandths on the base side. About 110 on the treble. So I, that saddle's fairly tall. I think I'm going to take it down. I am going to tune this up to pitch though before I do that. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the nut side right before I do anything to the saddle side. Um, that way I only have to get that saddle out of that slot once. That's the big thing. So I'm going to get that 18 thousandths pick and we're going to check out the nut side. Well I've got this sitting at pitch now or really close. Um, did a one by one uh, when I was checking the, you know, checking with the red pick. They're sitting a lot lower than they were. They're probably not as low as they could be, but they're a lot better. I think we should check the 12 now. Yeah, we're just sitting at a hundred thousandths, I think. I think most of that came off of this side. They were really high at the nut. Sitting about a hundred thousandths on that side too. I could still come down and it'd be a very comfortable height there. It's a little higher than a hundred thousandths, I guess. I'd say, and 
Ah, I measured it and I've totally forgotten what I said up here. 115, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna write that down before I forget it. And so we want to get that down to about 80 thousandths and 90 thousandths. So that's 15 and 20 more, 35, 15 and 10 more, 25, then double it, 70 thousandths off the high, uh, off the treble side, and 50 thousandths off the bass side. Well, the camera died there for a second, but I need to take 70 thousandths off the treble side and 50 thousandths off the bass side. I think that's worth doing. I think it's gonna make this just play great once we get it there, and that, I noticed that saddle's just a little high, I think. Uh, the biggest problem I have now is getting that saddle out of the slot. I don't want to loosen just one all at once because it kind of changes the tension of the others. So I let them all go a little bit, and then I can start working on getting them really loose. Well, I had to loosen them up quite a bit, and I sat here and held it up like this and got one corner and just slid it out. But I got it out. Uh, now what I'm going to do is do the thing with the sharpie, as soon as I find the sharpie. So I'll mark the ends with a sharpie. So they're set at 50 thousandths and then I'll just scratch a line in that sharpie. Perfect. Set them to 70 thousandths for the treble side. It's not a lot. sure sounds like it's a lot more than it is. They're 69,000, it's close enough. So now I've got a line on each side. When I take this to the sander, I can just sand up to those lines. And then I'll have exactly the saddle height I need to get this right where I want it to be. Well, I put the saddle back in. While the saddle was out, I went ahead and shaved some off of the top of the nut so the grooves weren't quite so deep. The saddle looks much more like a saddle height should be. That is for sure. All right. Now I'm just gonna pick it up, get it up to pitch, bring you back once I get it there. I've got her up to pitch. Plays really great. <laughs> it's kind of at the point in which I was wondering how do you, how did he play it before? I don't think I've mentioned it, but this was a uh, church guitar. Yeah, one that's pretty much only played at church, but played, I think, every Sunday, which explains the wear, but, you know, with all that, the height difference between the nut and where the frets were worn to, it had to have been hard to play. Frets are really well polished.
Oh. Plays really well. The only thing I have left to do here is do a couple little drop fills on the neck. Uh, just, just a couple of spots right along there and the same place on the other side. Um, and those are going to just take a little bit of time to dry. And I'm going to let this sit for a little while. Uh, a couple days definitely. I just want to make sure that it's going to hold. So yeah, it'll sit here in the shop a couple more days just to make sure it's all solid. But other than that, it's looking really good. It feels really good, the brake, you know, you can't really feel it. And the other thing is we're lucky that it's high enough up that you don't really hit it while you're playing, I don't think. Unless you're reaching for the first fret with your second finger. I'm noticing I need to round the corners of the nut a little bit more, but the height feels great all the way up. I noticed before I lowered this saddle, it was actually a little sharp at the 12th fret, intonation-wise. Since I've lowered it, it seems to be right where it needs to be. So I'm real happy with this one. This uh. I'm not sure I've talked about this guitar a whole lot. It is a Breedlove Atlas series. It's made in Korea. Um, I'll show you the headstock and maybe the inside label if you can see it. Kinda in there. We did quite a bit to this Breedlove to get it playing well and playing it all with the headstock break. I really like playing it. I'm probably going to play it some more once I turn the camera off. <laughs> but uh, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribing would help us a whole lot. Thanks for watching.